The doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at concussion symptoms and when to get worried. Now first off, what is a concussion? Well very simply, if you bang your elbow into a, a wall, you'll bruise the bone and the skin. If you bang your head hard enough, you'll get a concussion. Now the brain has a lot of different mechanisms to prevent um, getting concussed. Uh, for example, your brain is encased in this um, hard eggshell that you call your skull. And then in addition to that, it's swimming in a little um, swimming pool with a bunch of fluid around it. But if you bang your head hard enough, you'll still be able to shake the brain and make it smack itself against um, the lining of the skull. That tends to cause, just like if you bang your elbow or bang your knee or any other body part, you get swelling and soreness. Now, in the brain, it's a little more complex than that because in addition to this swelling and soreness, obviously you're going to knock out some of the neurons and whatever neurons are in that area uh, are not going to be able to perform their bodily functions. So um, concussions run in a spectrum from mild to severe. Typically in my office, in a family doctor's office, what I typically see is just mild and moderate concussions. The severe stuff usually ends up going to the emergency room. Now, to give you a little illustration of um, how your family doctor would approach a concussion, um, earlier this week, which is why this story is so salient, I got a call from my wife while I was still at work. I was seeing a patient and she called all in a panic and told me that my two-year-old had just fallen off the um, kitchen table right onto the back of his head. We like to call him a monkey because he's always climbing everywhere. So <clears throat> um, she was freaking out and stuff, worrying about this concussion stuff. <laughs> so the first thing I did is um, I asked to talk to him on the phone and he was still a little weepy and stuff and he said, Daddy, um, what did he say now? Uh, Daddy, I fall and hit my head. So I commiserated with him a little bit. I told him it's going to be okay, son, etc. And then I got, um, got my wife back on the phone. So I explained to her um, that I didn't think that there was any major risk. So how was I so confident about that? Well, the first thing, one of the things that we do uh, when we're assessing concussion risk is we look at two S's. One is what kind of surface did the person hit? And two, what speed did they hit at? Now for surface, I knew that he fell on a hard wood floor. Now even though it's called a hard wood floor, in reality, if you hit wood, it will bounce. So there's quite a bit of give with it. And if you drop something on, on hardwood, you'll feel the, the floor vibrate. That is dissipation of energy. So that is quite different from falling on your concrete garage floor where there's absolutely no give. Any force um, trans transmitted there is going to be, um, it, it's not going to spread out. It's going to go straight in, straight to, through your skull and um, shake your brain up. So the, that was the first thing that made me feel reassured because I knew it was a wood floor. A carpet obviously would have been even better. Um, the second thing is the speed. Now, if you get thrown from a motorcycle, that is a completely different scenario from getting thrown off your bicycle. So the former is probably going to end up going to the ER, to the emergency room, whereas just falling off your bicycle, especially if you had a helmet on, which again absorbs some of the, the force or the shock, um, you're going to do better because of less speed. So in this case, a fall from the kitchen table, again, I'm figuring this is not going to be a high velocity impact. So I felt pretty confident that my little guy was going to be okay. Now in my office, most of the cases that I see of concussion are almost invariably sports related. Uh, it usually falls on ice in hockey, um, gym accidents, um, uh, rugby players banging heads together or banging their head into some other body part, stuff like that. Now uh, let me just take a look at um, symptoms. Uh, move off this slide here and move to this one here. Uh, this slide um, is also trying to illustrate here again the idea that when you 
when you hit into some kind of a surface, whether it's, uh, this picture here is vertical, but if you just turned it horizontal, you could consider instead of a wall that this was a floor, whatever surface, um, after the skull is arrested against the surface, the brain continues by inertia to want to move forward and until it hits into the, the skull and banging into it, causing the, a concussion. <clears throat> now, the, there are some danger symptoms to look for in concussions. Now, here are the danger signs. I call them the five S's. Sleepiness. Now, some sleepiness or stunning is normal with a concussion. The type of sleepiness that I'm talking here with is profound sleepiness. So the person, uh, you, the individual that you're looking at, they're nodding to sleep. You, you, you shake them, they're, uh, and then they're back to sleep again, or they mutter a few words and then they're off to sleep again. That is not normal. And that should obviously strike you as not normal. Now with my little guy, when I, when I got home, um, later in the night, um, I deliberately went and woke him up just to see what his behavior was like. He was, it, he was immediately rousable. He recognized who it was. He, he started trying to open a conversation and I put him back to sleep. He was obviously okay. Now, next um, really abnormal symptom to look out for is if somebody without epilepsy suddenly has a seizure for the first time. That is a very bad harbinger. Third thing is a severe headache. Now again, emphasis is on severe. It is natural and normal to have some degree of um, head, headache. You've just banged your skull. The tissues are gonna be raw. It is normal to feel some headache. What we're talking about here is a blinding severe headache. If somebody's telling you they just had a concussion and they've got the worst headache they've ever felt in their life, that is again um, a bad omen. Uh, the one, two, three, fourth one here is um, spitting up. By spitting up, I mean vomiting. Most people, again, in a concussion will have some degree of nausea because of the shakeup of their neuronal system. What we're talking about here is not just feeling nauseous, but persistent vomiting and effortless vomiting. So they're just, um, I guess they're sitting there convalescing and suddenly they're, they're regurgitating um, stuff up. If you're noticing that and it's repetitive, that again is a very bad sign. And the final one, smudged vision, that's number five. By smudged vision, what I mean is the individual that has sustained the concussion uh, tells you that their vision has changed. Things are looking smeared and blurred. Again, if that is the case, uh, that is a bad omen. For any of these five signs, if you notice them in the individual that you're um, looking after that's just sustained a concussion, you should present to the emergency room, the ER, and be assessed. Um, the reason why it's so important not to waste time with, on something like this is um, the when you see these kind of uh, danger symptoms, it means that there's actually swelling occurring inside the head. Now, the head is an enclosed container. There's not much room for swelling to occur. So if your brain keeps trying to swell out like a big popcorn, um, eventually it's gonna start crushing itself under its own pressure of trying to swell. And that causes um, nerve destruction or neuronal destruction, which is obviously very bad news. You need your brain for all computations that you do, including talking, walking, sleeping, reading. Everything that you do is dependent on those neurons inside there. Your, your spirit might be important too, but um, here on earth, <laughs> your neurons are king. If you lose them, you lose functions. Um, so that is, so what I was trying to show you there is a spectrum of um, symptoms that you can expect from a concussion and what's normal versus what's not normal. Um, and that is basically what you can expect from concussion. Now, if you, if you fall into the latter category of uh, mild or moderate concussion, uh, the treatment is very simple. You basically just need brain rest. You're trying to rest the neurons. They've just been stunned. They need, if you just finished spraining your ankle or, or spraining your wrist, you don't go around and then just start, start trying to run a marathon or do a bunch of knitting. You rest the area. In the same way, if you have a concussion, you have to rest your brain. 
And by that, that means uh, basically sensory deprivation. So you go into a room that's kind of dark, you sleep as much as you want. Um, no social media, no TV, no reading, no texting, none of those fun um, computer derivative um, things, no video games, nothing like that, just brain rest. If you want, you can look outside, go for a walk, stuff like that. And typically you need to do that for a, a few days until you start feeling uh, more like yourself. Um, one of the other things that you might notice in somebody who has a concussion is that they get what we call a flat affect. So in other words, they don't smile much. They, they, they basically look droll. They, they, there's very little expression on their face. So one of the things you can look for for recovery is that you'll notice that they, their expressions become more um, rosy again. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, concussion symptoms and what category to put someone in and to understand whether you can reassure yourself in them or whether you actually need to go to the ER for attention. So thank you for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe so I can keep you informed as I upload new videos and um, have a great rest of your day and be careful with your noggin. You need it for the rest of your life. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.